Hi, I'm Tom Gray, UK contributor and editor at The Ring and author of The King and I. The following is a picture gallery featuring three bouts which are not covered in the article. We hope you enjoy it. In the ninth defence of his heavyweight title, Larry Holmes faced Canadian slugger Trevor Berbick. The champion was looking to set a record of nine straight knockouts in heavyweight title defences, but unable to dispose of Berbick, he remained tied with former champion Tommy Burns at eight. As always, the Holmes jab dictated terms, and although Berbick was effective on the inside, he was never able to take control or seriously threaten his opponent. In the corner, the champion continually complained to Hall of Fame trainer Eddie Futch about how awkward Berbick was and grew frustrated with his inability to end what became an ill-tempered affair. Ultimately, Berbick was brave but outgunned in terms of skills and at the end of 15 rounds, there was only one winner. Holmes retained Ring Magazine and WBC titles by a lopsided unanimous decision, two scorecards awarding the Eastern Assassin a shutout victory of 150 to 135. Berbick would eventually win the WBC heavyweight title by outpointing Pinklin Thomas in 1986, but he lost the belt to a rampaging Mike Tyson later that year. Holmes' 17th title defence came against Marvis Frazier, who was the son of legendary former heavyweight champion Joe Frazier. Holmes had once been employed as a sparring partner for Smoking Joe, but he was now a great champion in his own right and levels above a much smaller challenger. Marvis, sporting the same green and gold trunk design his father had adorned during his 1971 victory over Muhammad Ali, entered the ring with confidence. It was short-lived. He managed to avoid a handful of jabs, but just after the midway point of the opening round, Holmes landed a right hand to the point of Fraser's chin. The blow sent the stricken challenger sprawling across the ring and onto his face. He rose gamely, but Holmes smelled blood. Holmes unloaded a frightful beating on Frazier, knocking out his mouthpiece while mercifully requesting referee Mills Lane to halt the slaughter. A stream of brutal right hooks to the head and a savage left hook to the body were the finishing blows. The fight was stopped at 2.57 of round one. This was Holmes' fifth first round knockout and his shortest world title fight. Frazier would have one more high profile contest against Mike Tyson, which also ended in the opening round. The 35-year-old Holmes had been a professional fighter for 12 years and was now taking part in his 20th world title bout. Taking big chances against top flight opposition was no longer an option for the great champion and that's where David Bay came in. At 6 foot 3 and 233 pounds, the Philadelphia brawler was an imposing physical specimen but he only had 14 fights, most of which came against undistinguished opposition. Bay secured this fairy tale opportunity with an upset win over top contender Greg Page, but Holmes was a completely different proposition. Although shaken up twice in the early rounds, the champion used his quick hand and experience to control the pace and landed quality shots almost at will. He scored two brutal knockdowns in the eighth round and came very close to ending the fight. Bay was running on empty and a savage attack by the champion in round 10 forced referee Carlos Padilla to intervene. Bay never really recovered from the defeat and was quickly reduced to journeyman status. This was the final stoppage victory of Holmes' world title career. He scored a points win over Carol Williams in May 1985 and lost his titles to Michael Spinks later that year.